Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome back to Sunless Skies. In the last episode, we, uh, well, tried to kill a few scribe spinsters to get their wood and they kicked the ever-living crap out of us. So I do need to repair the ship, but in order for us to repair the ship, we are going to need some fuel and supplies. The overarching goal right now is to deliver people for the new street line. And we do have somebody, but we have to go pick them up from the Imperium. It's times like this that I wish I built the gate. But short of trying to find a lot of bronze wood, uh, we're quite far off doing that, so I might have to do it the old-fashioned way, which is slightly annoying, because it's going to take a while. But I think we can make it work. Well, we can definitely make it work. It just means there's going to be an awful lot of, uh, well, dead air, I suppose. Is that a guest? That's a guest. They don't have their light on. I think I'll give them a, a like a pass, judging by the fact that we're kind of missing half this ship right now. We can just go straight down here. This should be a considerably easier way to go. Not that way. Not that way. Got lost. Got lost. I knew that was going to happen. God damn it. Okay. <laughs> I'm out of practice. I've obviously been playing too much. Uh... Oh, what have I been playing? I guess I've been playing Cyberpunk. I was also tricked into playing The Room 3 on stream yesterday, so my brain's a little addled. It's good fun, though. It was good fun. Let's not drive into that weft. I would rather stay in this time period. Thank you very much. Yeah, so today all I have to do is record this, and then it's like, oh, yay, day off, which is rare. And I'm probably just going to spend the entire day playing Cyberpunk, believe it or not. Has anybody else who, who watches this bought it? Uh, because I am interested in how you're finding it. I know, I know on consoles it's been an absolute massive, just tire fire of horrendous nature. Apparently the patch that came out has fixed a lot of the problems on the original PlayStation 4. If you had a pro, it was okay, I think. But the original PS4 is just... It, it's dying on its feet. It doesn't surprise me. But obviously I'm playing on the PC and it's playing fine. I'm getting like maximum graphics, 70, 70 frames per second, which is nice. I was expecting it to be worse than that. There is still a few bugs. My favorite bug is the uh, the, the mysterious T-pose where <laughs> I'll walk into an area and I'm like, right, stealthy, stealthy, fully immersed in the action. And then I'll just go around the corner and there'll be a bloke standing there, T-posing, just like, Hello! I'm a god! <laughs> it's good fun. But other than that, I've had nothing that I consider game-breaking. Oh, cars like to just, like, arrive in each other as well and blow up in the middle of the street. That's fun. But with a game that big, not much they can really do. I know everyone's having a go at them because they were like, we're delaying the game until, uh until it's bug fixed and things, but uh, I think they probably just delayed the game because it wasn't ready. Right. Let's repair the damn ship. Hey, your locomotive. Your hull fully repaired. 156, that's not too bad. Right then. Okay, so now we've repaired the ship, we need to uh, pick up the cargo, huh? What do we need? So we don't need the bronze wood, that's for... Oh, 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 excuse me. Oh dear, my voice hasn't warmed up at all today. Oh, Not good. Uh, right, so we need, what, seven for 25% was it? Let me look at my notes, hang on. Yes, and we have 13, typical, so we do. We we would have 60. No, we already have 90, but even at uh, 90, we already have 30, which means that would give us up to 90%. Unless I've just done maths completely wrong because I got confused halfway, which does happen. 
If we're at 30, 25 plus 25, 50, 60, 70, 80%. Okay, that was close. Okay, so yeah, we still need quite a lot more bronze wood. And then we'd still need more on the other side again. Which is, you know, a problem. We don't need to go to Albion. We need to go to... Yeah, it's, at least it's in the reach. It's not back to Albion. So we don't need... Barrel of Unseason Towers. We just need three crates of munitions and two dried teas. And then... I guess I need to go back to the Reach. God damn it. Oh, I do need those. Yes. And then while I'm here, I'll pick up some more fuel and food, even though this is costing me a goddamn fortune. And we will set off. There's going to be some serious uh, money-making schemes coming up in my near future. We are slowly but surely running out of money. Because I'm using it all on these damn... The uh, damn new street line. They're bleeding me dry and they ain't giving me any money. The bastards. Because I could look at doing some prospects at the same time. Probably the safer bet. It's just only a couple of the prospects actually have giant payouts that are kind of worthwhile. A lot of them are just kind of... Meh, I guess, is the, is the easiest way of putting that. Kind of just like, what, what's the point? Do you do it for like 300 sovereigns? But then, admittedly, some of them have quite good uh, secondary rewards, I guess. Like some of them have an invitation to perdurance and stuff like that. As long as there's nothing particularly nasty around here. And there isn't normally, but you never know. With this game, sometimes it'll just drop something nasty on you. I'm surprised we haven't actually rescued anyone from the work world in Albion yet. Like, it's been the Carnet twice in a row. Maybe the Carnet work worlds are easier to escape from than the Albion ones? Vacant building? Uh, let's see if we can find something. 73% chance we'll, we'll find something. Most of the factory has been picked clean by scavengers. Something of value may remain behind locked doors or beneath fallen rubble. Damn it. The scavengers that preceded you have done their work well. You find nothing in the factory but echoing corridors, drafty workshops, and cobwebs. Uh oh. Oh no, I completely forgot my terror was out of control. Hmm. Oh, we have a 100% chance of success. Alright, find the pies responsible and dispose of them. Out the door with you, my dear fellows. Goodbye. Under interrogation, a sallow stoker reveals where the pistol is hidden and who stole it. You seize the culprit and conduct a swift trial. The mutineer spits at you as you condemn her to the skies. Bye bye That was lucky. We desperately need... Oh god, hang on, I've gone the wrong way. We desperately need to lower our terror, apparently, which might mean a trip to Magdalene. God, we're, we're operating on super basics right now. I do not want to fight you. Oh god, fine. Missed. Pull down. Yeah, right, bye. Yeah, run, 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 run. Run, 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 run. Mr. Shenman. God, every time. That song gets stuck in my head all the time. What, what did I last see that in? Was that in Doctor Who? That might have been in Doctor Who. I, I recently watched... Oh, who was the doctor? Was it the lady? Jodie Whittaker? It was one of the Doctors recently, it was at the Capaldi or her, where they go onto the space station and the, the sleep monsters. <laughs> and that song, it was in there and it just got stuck in my head for like months. Whoops, you didn't see me crash, that was fine, that was perfect. I have to send myself to custom. Nothing to declare. Clean sweep. Into your engine. I may drop a stop at Port Prosper. Oh, that was a bad move. I probably should have done the thing, because I don't want to gain terror. Oh, well. 
So she's gone first class, it would have probably lowered my terror. And here we are. Okay. So let's lower our terror. See if we can stop off at Port Prosper. There might be some terror dropping thing here. Even if it's just a little one. Help us limp back to uh, New Winchester. What do you have for us here, my dear fellows? Uh, we still have the bleak industrialist. I haven't done that yet, have I? I need to swap to Ephemera. Ephemera in the Blue Kingdom, I believe. Okay, let's take the factory tour. Today, the factories of Port Prosper are open to the public. The factories of Port Prosper's East End belch out smoke. Inside, hours mined from the Mother of Mountains are refined. The workers live in tenement blocks adjoining the smokestacks and are rarely seen in the rest of Port Prosper. Today, the owner of the Windward Refinery is allowing visitors to tour his factory. Well, we have a few options here. We can speak with the owners, how goes the work, we can lurk in the shadows which will increase our eastward reputation, or we can admire the factory which will increase our westward reputation. Let's ask... Let's ask how goes the work. The factory manager removes his stovepipe and wipes away a bead of sweat. It's been difficult getting everyone ready for the visit. Port Prosper's laws demand transparency of industry, but it's worth it for the safety of our workers. Production has been up, more hours refined than ever. See there, he indicates another visitor, a youthful notable. He has received some of Prosper's own barrels. Our labours are going so well, even we here out in the provinces are beginning to reap the rewards. Oh, I bet you the East Enders don't like you very much, though. It narrow, its narrow streets huddle in the shadow of a great crag. Banners display the stony features of her renewed majesty. Wealthy West Enders strut by exchanging polite greetings and veiled gossip, while sooty East End workers file to the hour refining factories. Peeling posters promise fresh, wholesome lives in the reach to new arrivals, but most of the posters are years old. More newcomers arrive at Port Prosper than ever leave it. Oh dear, I didn't lower my, uh, did not lower my terror. We offered some transport here. One Sky Story. Let's try it. What can we get? A crowd gathers to listen to your tales. Your stories of daring escapes and fingernail victories go down almost as well as the whiskey. Ambition dawns in several bloodshot eyes. Some might even follow through on it when you, on it when sober. You'll now be able to offer another settler transport. Okay. Uh, where would you want to go? Would-be pioneers clamour at the station, eager to make their fortune amongst the stars. I simply must move to Titania from everything. I've been given to understand it's altogether divine. She rushes onto your vessel as soon as you've finished shaking hands. Excellent! I'll stay out of your way then, you'll hardly even notice me. Any luck, you'll forget I'm even here. Okay. Let's hope I don't forget you're here. Also, yet again, didn't lower my terror. We're heading for the rat. This our saviour rat. But delivering her to Titania is actually quite good. It's kind of on the way. Even though it's probably going to take the rest of the episode for me to actually get over to that side of the map. Because these damn quests take forever. <laughs> it's awesome. It's basically just me, uh, just me exploring at this point. Uh, there's not much more to it. I'm just picking up bits of random stuff. What are we at? We're at 80%. Don't you dare crash into me, Svelston. Svel... <sighs> Never mind. Never mind. 
Damn people, why do they learn to drive? Worse than me. Then, I still stand by, there are some games that I'm quite good at driving in. I know I've developed quite a reputation of being a very bad driver in video games, but you know. I'm quite good in Cyberpunk. GTA, Cyberpunk, stuff like that I'm quite good at. Forza Horizon. Anything with realistic driving physics in, no, not a chance in hell. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, hello game. You decided you didn't want to... want to hang there for a second. There we go. Okay, we dropped it down 7%. That is not an insurmount... That is, like, not a small amount. That is quite a lot. Now all we need to do is get back to... Uh, New Winchester. And then hopefully we can make it to Titania. We'll drop off that set line. For some money. Money. Because we do need money. That's still like the final part of the ending that I'm trying to go for is the money. Sorry, I was having a drink. You know, I haven't done this episode. Normally I open it up with this line. But if I look out of the window today, it's sunny. I know. What the hell? the hell is going on? There is sun outside. It'll be for about an hour, but there is sun. It's quite nice, actually. It makes a difference. Everything's a bit brighter than it was before. Yesterday, pitch black. Like, so, as soon as four o'clock comes around in the UK, I say, just game over. It's, it's pitch black. It's so... I hate it. I hate the window so much. But it is December, and I, I should be thinking of doing something Christmassy for my YouTube channel, really, shouldn't I? I have been doing the um, the Christmas stuff on Fallen London. Well, admittedly, I've only done one part of it, and that's getting the one veil, pail even, of snow, because I'm currently halfway through the exceptional story, and I'm stuck in the sea somewhere. So I need to record that, and I'll be doing that on Thursday, which, by the way, if you haven't checked that out, which I imagine you probably have if you're watching this, um, my exceptional story this week... Uh, the Acanian Cup. Oh my god, I love it. It's so good. If, it, it, it crosses so well into Sun the Seas. It's brilliant. Uh, excuse me? I somehow managed to miss the dock. I was like, I pressed... There we go. I didn't even know that was possible. There we go, it lowered it. Maybe I won't worry. What was I saying? Oh yeah, it's such a good exceptional story. It's probably like, it's up there as one of my favourites, and I've only played half of it. But it, it ties so well in to Sun the Seas, which is something that I've re only recently started playing. Well, I say recently. It's probably been about six months now, knowing how my YouTube series go. What am I on? Episode 40 or something? But... It's so cool to see the places named in Fallen London and then see them, uh, like, know them from some of the seas. That was a really badly structured sentence. I think you get what I mean. Basically, already, like, seeing them in some of the seas made it all the better in, some, in Fallen London. And then you have some of the skies, which is just kind of like an outlier. But I am kind of excited about the new game that's coming out as well. Uh, let's see if we all pass. Yay! Uh... That should be interesting. It's a visual novel. But I'm still, I'm kind of on the fence. I, I think I'll like it because I like Felbert's way of writing. And if you think about it in a roundabout sort of way, Fallen London's a visual novel. Kind of. It's, it's, it's just a novel. Uh, it's a book with buttons. And it's like make your own adventure books, isn't it? Do you remember those? I have a massive set of make your own adventure books. I wonder what, like, where did they go? I can't remember what they were called, but they were really good. You know, like, uh, if you fall down pit, go to page 10, you are dead. Uh, if you jump across pit, go to page 7, uh, you jumped. Um, like, then you roll a dice and did you slip or whatever. It's basically just like a Dungeons and Dragons story in a book. I had like 10 of them. I used to play them a lot when I was younger. Are you hostile? Oh, you're a... Almost, I, I, my brain told me that was a tackety, I don't know why. Like, no, no, you are definitely a ma Damn it. You are definitely a marauder. Oh, come on. Ow, I shot myself. 
we'll just look that never happened we we instantly patched it up it's fine tanya is just up here we can drop off that cellar and then uh, i'll get us into eleutheria i guess for the and that'll be the end of the episode i no doubt oh aren't these fun action-packed story filled oh hello you should be not as far as i know bees aren't hostile unless you have honey no i think i might be full of rubbish maybe they just become more hostile oh girl no i don't want to fight you bees bees are horrible even though i think one missile would probably end them i go over the top though i can i always think i have to go round but i can just go over the top Tanya is such a beautiful place. Right. Rally to Titania's defense. Here we go. I love the way it's just like, not your problem. Flee. No, we're going to rally. Let's go. Oh, no, we lost a crew member. The cloister high fills the air with stingers and song. The Titanians resist as best they can. Once the hive has collected its nectar and the Titanian's home is ravaged, it leaves again for the further parts of the reach. <gasps> Recruit the rat brigade? Boy! Boy! Down here! Three rats glow up at you. They're wearing tattered military uniforms and carry rusted derringers. They're polite enough to point them. They're polite enough to point them elsewhere. There we go. Hmm, many hands make light work. Yeah, sure. I, I gotta have rats. Get on. The smallest, most scarred rat is called Cinders. She introduces her companions. This, she indicates, the rat wearing goggles, is my second. Petronella. A mechanic. He gestures toward a rat with glossy fur. And this is our agent, provocateur Albrecht. The rat inclines his head. We need a locomotive. These battle hardened rats are all the remain of the Rat Regiment, a mercenary company active in the early days of the Winchester War. Used to be a dozen of us, the best sappers around, says Cinders. Now look at us. Her whiskers twitch. Time for that later. We'll pay, my lady. I just gave you money. We will pay indicates that they're going to give us money. Uh, oh well. Uh, ah, here we go. You're here, drop off a settler. They have arrived at their destination. Whether or not they still wish to be here is another story entirely. Encourage your passengers to disembark. You've made good time. They should reward you well. A breeze wafts the sweet perfumes of wild flower in your direction. Lovers race by in various states of undress. A giggling nudist papers after them. The settler is not in her bunk, nor are her belongings. But she has left an envelope full of sovereigns on her pillow and a note of thanks. One of your crew later reports finding her picture in a Prosper newspaper. There is a bounty on her head. Whoops. Oh well, 150 sovereigns. Not going to say no. Right. Do we need any more food and fuel? Probably. Every time I say otherwise. Yeah. Yeah, they do sell fuel and food, but I think we're going to need fuel more than... Oh, look, it's a firkin of red hurry. Ooh. Cabinet of Curiosities. Wonderful podcast. Uh, I've probably said that before. Hmm. They require seven firkins. <laughs> oh, there's a small part of me that's like, well, we're, go we're going. We're going to Eleutheria. 
and Achilles is in Eleutheria. Should I just risk going through the customs without it being in, in hidden storage? I've never done it. But I really need money. Money. Uh, oh dear. I don't have enough room, do I? Like five, six. Oh man, I have exactly enough room. Such a bad idea. Uh... Do I still have the hidden compartments? I do, but I only have two hidden compartments. Out of... Right, okay, we're just going to do it. <laughs> Screw it. We're going to hope that the, uh, the customs officer isn't paying attention. I want to see what happens if you fail. Best case scenario. <clears throat> oh, worst case scenario, I want to see what happens when I fail. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to regret Ah, I'm going to regret this so hard. Can I just sell some supplies here? Make some more room for some fuel? No, oh, buy the fuel, don't sell it. I could hear the people in the comment section being like, What are you doing? Don't do this, this is dumb. Let's have a look and see what happens. Only 700 sovereigns. I mean, that's quite a lot of sovereigns if I actually think about it. This may be a terrible idea. I just wish there was a way of getting my hidden compartments up to seven. And then I'd do nothing but these damn smuggler runs. <clears throat> Excuse me. It is the Eleutherian gate. I feel like the Eleutherian gate's not really manned that well anyway. I've gone the wrong way. Of course I've gone the wrong way. You'd have thought, after spending so many times going to Bloomin' Eleutheria, I'd be good at this by now. <laughs> this is so risky. This is dumb. This is dumb. There's like a one in three chance that they're just going to be like, yeah, yeah, we don't need to look at your, car uh, your cargo, it's fine. They'll just sign me off. And that's what I'm hoping for. Oh, hello. Somebody's trying to get me. Run. I need to go up just yet. <laughs> this is going to end up with me in, like, prison, isn't it? I can feel it. <laughs> oh, I'm mildly nervous. It was 700 sovereigns. It's a lot of money. I got a, I got a, I got a cargo hold full of honey again. It's a little less stressful in uh, Southern Seas, though, I'm not going to lie. Oh, why do did, why did my games always end up with me being a drug runner? I don't understand. It's just the quickest way to make money. Uh, who says crime doesn't pay, eh? Let's try not to hang around Faith's Fall too much because my terror is actually rather high again. Not entirely sure how or why it's gone that high so quick, eh? Guessing going through Titania. Going from New Winchester to Titania was enough to make it rise up quite high. Ooh. Wait, am I? Oh god, I'm not even remotely close. This is such a long trek. It's so much longer than I remember it being every time. I should have gone down. Even though I'm pretty sure this is the quicker way. No. Oh, almost scratched the paintwork. Must have a faster engine and uh oh. Sticky red stains in the cargo hold tell you that the crew have been indulging in your stash of red honey, sipping away in the night onto distant memories and dreams of other worlds. The perpetrators are not hard to uncover, yet they are one the ones briefly looking relaxed amongst the horrors of the high wilderness. Set a watch.
Oh, the guards do an excellent job of keeping the precious honey safe. There are no more incidents. That didn't make me lose any, did it? Nope, still have seven. Hey, but our terror fell, which is great. Who knew smuggling illegal goods was a, was a good terror lowering solution? Maybe it wouldn't have been so well if we actually failed. I imagine if we failed, we'd have lost some of the honey, which would have been bad, because I would have had two more runs. Even though... I, to be honest, let, let's, let me be perfectly honest here. I have a funny feeling this isn't going to work. I have a funny feeling I'm going to prison. But, I've never done it before, and I want to know what happens. So, consider this a thought experiment into the practicalities of doing this without making a hundred trips. Because the problem with making a hundred trips is the profit margins start to shrink, and the amount of time required per smuggler's run is uh, insane. In comparison. Because if I can only smuggle two at a time, because that's the only compartment I have, and I need to send seven, that's what, two, four, six, four runs? Well, it's, it's technically it's three and a half, but it takes the same amount of time whether it's half or full, so. That's a lot of going backwards and forwards between the places. Oh, Jesus Christ. No. Oh, it's coming for me. Bye bye. Oh god, I'll get close to the station now. This is where, like, if you're an actual, this is where your hands start getting clammy. Like, oh no, we're going up to customs. I sure hope the security guards don't spot me. I'm acting like I know what it's like to run. I have no idea. I have absolutely no idea what it's like to run drugs in real life. It's just movies and TV shows. That's where I'm getting that from. I can only imagine a very large quantity of drugs get smuggled around the world every day. Uh, successfully, so... Maybe this isn't the best way to do it. Or just buy loads of, um... Seasons of Unbarreled Time. Unbarreled Seasons of Time? No? I'll get it right eventually. And we'll just swap out all the time for... drugs. Customs. Ah, <laughs> the inspector boards the ship, smiling as she makes terse notes on her clipboard. Captain, such a pleasure. Shall we begin? I'm almost positive we can make this as painless as possible. Uh... <laughs> 52%! Oh, God, guys. <laughs> ah, no! Your best attempts at secrecy fail. Oh dear, oh dear, sighs the avuncular inspector, her smile fading. She blows her whistle, summoning three very large clay men golems to her side. Your illicit cargo has been discovered. Three bulky clay men stand ready to enforce the inspector's will. They prepare to stamp your import form with the indelible red ink and hand you over to the authorities. These days, those authorities increasingly consider smuggling akin to treason. Oh. <laughs> Wait, with one moment of inspiration? I can. Oh, there's an eight. Okay, so we can spin a web of deceit with a 56% chance that it uses our ministry stamp permits. Or we can bribe her. I am bribing 100%. Please guard 85%. Oh, for the love of. They stole my firkins! The Evocular Inspector glances at your confiscated cargo. Her expression suggests that she knows more is hiding somewhere, but suddenly doesn't feel the need to look too carefully for it. Sign here, she says, holding out a form to authorise the seizure. And be more careful in future, she adds, making sure the clay men don't hear. Bummer. That's just upsetting on a whole new level. Stole my honey. <laughs> I 
And here we are. <sighs> Let's go to Achilles, and then I will probably have to end the episode. But we're going to have to keep in mind that we have a th partially dis uh, delivered drugs to this place. I mean, we will still get money. I think we get the money for what we deliver on as we deliver it. I'm pretty sure. I'm not 100%, but I'm pretty sure. It means in theory, I should get some money for delivering this. Very good. So it cost me 100 each. I think I get about 200 back. But it won't cover the loss. Man, the music here is creepy. Like, horrendously creepy. I don't know why I've only suddenly noticed how creepy. Wow, there's a piece of the map I've never discovered before. That doesn't happen very often. Because I don't actually know where I'm going. You know what, let's go around the back. This way. I thought I'd left fear behind, they say. Apparently not. My poor driver's being a bit spooked. Don't blame him. Very spooky place. I still think Alien Theory is... Like, lore is very cool. Let's not... No. Holy crap. Oh wait, they all, they all died. Quick, find expensive stuff. Several globs of griever remains. They continue to spew livid ichor into the sky. Um. Let's search for Navarantine gemstones. Because we can sell those. Rather than toy soil your engine with viscera, you perform your investigation out in the sky. The griever's stomach is impossibly ca cavernous, but a smaller organ attached to it, about the size of a pig ready for the butcher's block, seems swollen. Cutting through the muscle membrane, you find gemstones rattling it inside like a pocket full of gallstones. Hello? What are you doing here? Oh god, evasive maneuvers. Cipher the sigils in its bones? Okay. The Grievers are not like, are not one of Mr. Darwin's cosmic accidents. They were made. The sigils, you believe, describe their purpose and their place. You identify a symbol of corruption, another of duty or responsibility, another of violation. As best as you can tell, when the laws of distance were broken, when there existed places that should not be, the Grievers were sent to correct the situation. Oh my god. Uh, we got it. <laughs> Alien, damn. I wanted more gemstones. Life terror. Oh no. Rather than soil your engine with a viscera, yes, you do it in the sky. Uh, as soon as you cut into the grave's stomach, the insurgent ruptures. Something huge begins to push its way out from inside. It is a slab of engraved masonry which slides out and tumbles away into the sky. It is followed by an entire stone column, much longer than it could have ever fitted in the stomach, and enough stone slabs to pave a town square. You barely manage to scramble aside before they crush or carry you with them. What? Okay. Intriguing. And we'll decipher the length of these bones. We can't because we don't have enough numbers of inspiration. Fire in the hold. Fire in the hold! Crew, fix! Yes. Yeah, your crew rush bravely into the billowing smoke armed with wet blankets and buckets of sand. Their cries are replaced by coughs, then by silence. When the fire is quenched and the smoke parts, you begin the anxious process of a head count. Yeah, we lost two people, it's fine. We just gotta keep my guns. Keep my bullets. I need my bullets. They're important. That's how we get home. How we get out. Please, God, let me get to Achilles. I don't want to fight any more grievers. I just want to. I just want to, like. <sighs> deliver my drugs. 
the money. Uh, do you know what? Let's just not mess around with that hermit. Every time I mess around with the hermit, I make a wrong decision and it ends up backfiring. Okay. A place called New Spite. Awesome. Oh my god, look at my terror. <laughs> it is called New Spire. I really like the music here. In fact, I really like here. It's such a cool place. I just deliver my drugs. Oh. Uh, let's help. The urchins. I still haven't done Hojo Toho. At some point. Oh, balls. God, stop. People just keep dying. Hey, at least we got some silence you gossip. <sighs> Guys, I brought you your drugs. Uh. Hey. Okay. So it doubles. We get we get a hundred percent profit margin on it, which is amazing. I just wish I could increase my things. All right, I'm gonna have to have a look, aren't I? Trying to increase my capacity for hidden stuff, but I am gonna have to end the episode here. We have run over by quite a bit. Thank you very much for watching. Please like, subscribe. Let me know what you think. Your comments are greatly appreciated. And as always, see you next time. <laughs>